<laughs> Sleepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Kame said she'll be here next week, so Kame would be the special guest. Special guest. All right, Kame, let us know what you want to talk about next week. Yeah, she gotta, keep it, gotta keep it appropriate. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a PG show. Every oh, yeah. I do have a PG show. I do. <laughs> All right, thank y'all for tuning in live. Appreciate y'all so much. Y'all are awesome. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. And friends, I'm Carlton. I'm Kendra. I'm Carmen. I'm Kevin. I'm Makia. Yes, everybody got to introduce themselves. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, them plays were all together. Uh, we're celebrating our dad's birthday this week. So happy birthday to dad! Happy birthday! birthday. birthday. Yay. Yay. So um, we're all here, and so we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna talk about disappointment. Um, I thought this was an appropriate topic. I must admit, it's a selfish one because I experienced a lot of disappointment the last two weeks. Mm. So, <laughs> what? So, <laughs> um, I, I basically, I, uh, I applied for this grant and I was like, cause people was like pumping me up. Yeah, you should apply for this grant. Um, and I already like kind of spent the money in my head, like what I was going to do with it. Cause I felt like it really helped my company and everything. Um, I didn't, I just found out this week I didn't get it. So, I got the letter this week, and it was very disappointing. And also, too, uh, we lost one of our financial backers for our film, The Oath. Um, and so, we had to postpone the movie. So, yeah, we're supposed to start filming this weekend. So, yeah, it was just a lot. And I had to, like, really, like, I was really kind of just like, when I ride in the car, like, I kind of reflect a lot. Come my car by myself a lot, and I was just like, God, what's really good? Like honestly, I feel like I have to be one hundred percent like, what's really good? Because I'm like, I feel like I'm doing all this work and putting all this time and effort into this, and it's like, why does it feel like I'm not winning? Like I was like, when am I gonna get my big win? Like I'm, I'm honestly tired of seeing other people win, and I just feel like I'm stuck. And it's not like it's not like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do as far as my calling and everything. This is what I'm doing. I'm passionate and I have been prosperous so thus far, but I really haven't received that big win yet. And so I just felt like I've been very disappointed just with life. You know, I just feel like we've talked about this before, like with having a college degree, I work this job and I'm not making what I quote unquote should be making. Um, I still live at home. Not that there's nothing wrong with that, but still just until you get to a point to be like, when are you gonna elevate? Like, we ain't gonna level up. Like, it's just... So, it's just kind of just honestly been a disappointment. We, I've just been questioning, like, okay, is it... Is it time? Like, I've just been... Honestly, I've been to the point I'm just like, you know what? I'm over it. And... I don't wanna do this no more. Maybe you probably just not... Not need to quit, but sometimes you have to take a step back and maybe get yourself together. As far as... Um... Maybe getting a job or because I know I'm doing that for me. I had to, like you said, I felt, I felt like I was in a place of disappointment as far as like career wise, like having a degree. Well, I have two degrees. I have my associate's degree in criminal justice, and I have my business degree, but still feeling like I'm not where I need to be. So that's a disappointment for me sometimes when I get in my head. But um, I realized that I need to take a step back and you know just try to figure out and ask God where does He want me. Or to place me where he needs me to be because I honestly people ask me like what I want to do or where I want to go and I'm like I really don't know so uh -oh. I just feel like when it comes to disappointment you'll never get used to it mm -hmm. uh, period I mean I've been I've had disappointments my whole life uh, especially when it came to uh, sports playing basketball um, that was a lot of every year it was a disappointment it was the same old same old every year um, and even as I'm older now, it's, I'm in that boat where it's like, you're seeing some people at my age graduated college, uh, doing 
doing big things uh, in the field that they want to be in. And I'm kind of like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Because, I mean, it's, you know, I, I don't, I feel like I don't have, I don't know my calling. Let's say that. I, it's not that I don't have one, I don't know it. And I see a lot of people who know what they want to do, who are going after it. And I'm over here like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing, where I'm supposed to be going. So it's kind of a disappointment to me because, like Carl said, you see, you, you, you're not trying to be envious of people, but, you, but you're seeing it, you're like, well, why am I not, what's, what did I do to where I'm not getting that, that shine, that time, like, you know, my, my time. Because you feel like, I mean, a lot of times you see a lot of people who have money who are succeeding at stuff and they aren't quote unquote good people. And, you know, you're doing, you feel like you're a good person. You feel like you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing and you haven't gotten anywhere. And so it's, it's just, it sucks sometimes. But I mean, I don't, I don't know what to do. All I do is pray, honestly. I'm still in that, in that point of my life. I still talk to God every day, like, what is really going on? Mm -hmm. Like, where am I supposed to be? Where am I supposed to go? Because, I mean, I don't want to be a technician at dish my whole life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. just not what I want to do. So I just, but I don't know what I want to do. I, um, I found myself like, and I've talked about this in um, my, I think one of my last blogs, and I was just saying how like uh, last year around this time, like a lot of my classmates from high school and like middle school, they were graduating from college, and um, they did like just the four years, and I'm, I was really discouraged. I'm like, dang, I'm still in school. I have a long way to go. And even now, even though, like, I'm I'm literally, like, a step closer, like, super close to graduating now from college, I still have to keep myself from getting discouraged from telling myself, you are, like, way behind everybody else. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. There's no, like, time stamp on how long you're supposed to be in college. But it's hard because you can see all these other people that are, like, your like your age or around your age and they're like seeing all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like there's even a um somebody I watch on YouTube and she lives in LA and she just got a penthouse in LA and she's just like she's nineteen years old and it's like in in my head I was like, dang, like she's doing all of this and I'm in school, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my degree. Like, I'm I'm getting it, you know, but then it's like, what am I gonna do with it? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, you yeah. get a degree, but then it's like, okay, so what's next? Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of get in the point where it's like, what's next? And I'm just, and I'm, I think I'm in a position now where I'm trying to, like, kind of figure that out. Mm -hmm. Like, what exactly do I want to do with it? What am I going to do with it? So, but I'm, I'm trying to learn to just enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to have, like, disappointing moments because I have them a lot. And, and most of them come from me just beating myself up, like, being really hard on myself. So, but I'm learning to, like, not do that and to just kind of counteract it so I have to like speak positivity to myself because that's the only way to stop it because you, you know we get in our heads so much mm -hmm. and then it's like we're in the funk all of a sudden because we're so hard on ourselves and we're disappointed like oh this sucks I'm not here I'm not where I think I should be or where everybody else is telling me to be but it's like dude. we put these expectations on ourselves and at the end of the day it kind of stresses us out yeah. You know what I'm yeah. and then that's when we become disappointed Cause like, it's like, like you said, you know, you try not to look at other people, but I mean, people in your face all the time. Right. So it's kind of hard. Right. Yeah, the, age, the age of social media, you see everybody's life. Like yeah. you can't help but see everybody else doing what they're doing. I mean, unless you get off of it, yeah. but I mean, you still, gonna, you go, you still like, you, you got to hear about it. Somebody's going to tell you, oh yeah, you heard about so-and-so. Yeah. yeah. Or you see so-and-so. I mean, that's just how it is. So you kind of. Honestly, disappointment comes from, like you just said, from you. Because mm -hmm. you put yeah. those expectations on yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the same time, too, though, you have to realize what people put out on social media is not the full story. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. people put what they want you to see out on social media. So, yeah, you don't see them doing great and, and bossing up and leveling up. But you ha we hear it all the time. Like, God's timing is not always our timing. And that's something I had to tell myself a lot. Like, I'm 27 and been working at the same place for 10 years. There are times where I'm like, ooh, Lord. I really need to figure something else out. But at the same time, like, I just told myself yesterday, why am I so concerned about trying to figure out what my next move is instead of living in the move that I'm currently in and being the best at it? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if I, like, bog myself down with, oh, well, I'm 27 and I don't have this and I don't have that, and I, I 
I would be in a padded room somewhere hugging myself. Like, let's just be real. But if I focus on where I am, what my journey is, and my, my current, what I'm doing, and make myself the absolute best at it, I've done the best that I can. And while, you know, I don't know what else God has in store for me and my family, I know it's something great. Mm -hmm. And I just have to keep telling myself that because otherwise I would be locked in a closet crying and that's, all the time. <laughs> that's, that's the problem with always looking at what other people are doing. Because like you said, we don't know what the, the struggle they had to go through to get to where they are. You know, the hustle and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like we just, like you said, we only see what they allow us to see. So like, even though the same, I'm speaking on the same 19 year old that lives in LA, she hustled. Now, she didn't show everything. Like, I don't know all that she went through. However, it took her a while to get there, though. Mm -hmm. Like, she had to start from a young age. So, she's been on YouTube for a long time, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, that doesn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's important. We get caught up in wanting to see. Like, I said, it's all talking about Carlton. Like, a lot of people think they want to do what Carlton is doing because they only see the end result. But it's like, you're not, wanting, you're not trying to put in the work. You just see... The rewards of it and it's like Carlton has been putting in the work for years like this is years upon years and he's been writing and doing stuff since I was little since I can remember so it's you have to realize that it's important to stay in your own lane you have and that means in every sense like mm -hmm. stop listening to what everybody else is saying don't look at other people's lanes like just stay literally stay focused on your lane what God has for you because that what's for you is for you mm -hmm. and nobody can take that away from it's you it's already written right exactly. nobody can take that away nobody can stop it the enemy can't stop it nobody so you know well I was encouraged right now because like I said again I just feel like it's a lot it's just like I said, it's because I've said this often. Like I said, you have to look in your own lane and not really focus on other people. But it's really hard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, like it's, totally definitely. it's, it's definitely hard, it really when, especially when you see people that you started before and it's not that progressing before you. Right. So, I mean, but like I said, I just feel like this was needed because, like I guess I just really, I just kind of just been like in a not really a funk, but just kind of just like. All right. Yeah, I've been that way. I, I've been that way for a while since I've been. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. I mean, working for jobs that I, the only people that would respond, basically. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like a, you see, it, especially since I was a you know, stupid basketball head, they see like kids, people I age who are in college still, but they hoop, you know what I mean? They hoop mm -hmm. it. And it's like, that's what I wanted to do is to be in college still and just play basketball. But I mean, that's not how, how my life is supposed to go. So you just have to realize like, that's just not, what's supposed to happen. So I just got to start listening to what Carmen and Kia said about just living in your moment and living in your time because that's just, that's all you got. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not anybody else but yourself. Mm -hmm. So you, it's kind of, it's like you said, it's hard to shut people out, but you got, you got to. Mm -hmm. You got to yeah. shut everybody else. Stop looking at everybody else. I think, and I think that's the important. It's, it's really healthy to take a social media break. Mm -hmm. Every so often, like, really plan to take a social media because we get so caught up in seeing what other people are doing, and that can be real discouraging. Mm -hmm. And we allow that to get to us, and that's, I, I have to, I know for me, I definitely have to take a social media break, and I take one for, like, months on end. Like, I'm not on there right now. I haven't been on there for a while. And I think it's just necessary for me because I know how I get. And it's like, I need to focus on what I'm doing mm -hmm. and keep focusing on school, do what I need to do, and planning this wedding. Like, you know, it's a, it's a lot that's going on with me. I can't be worried and concerned about what other people are doing. So, you know, it's, it's real healthy for your mental and emotional state, too. Mm -hmm. So I think planning some time to just really take time to just get off of looking off social media and looking at what everybody else is doing can really help a lot. It helps me a lot. So yeah. I, I honestly recommend that to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And going back to, like, what Carlson said, it's so easy to, like, see everything that's going wrong in your life and being like, all right, God, like, why is this happening? But I saw a meme the other day, and it was like, instead of asking God, why is this happening or why is this not happening, ask God, what am I supposed to learn from this? Mm -hmm. right. Like, what am I supposed to take back from this setback? Mm -hmm. And then build off on that. It's a, it's changing the conversation that you have. You got to change the mm -hmm. narrative mm -hmm. of whatever negative is happening. Be like, Because, look, yesterday, I, look, we had two flat tires in one day. Yeah. We spent a hundred and fifteen dollars on tie, <laughs> and I was just irritated beyond belief. But we got in the car, and Cam was like, "You know what? We got part of our tax return back for this reason. God knew we was gonna have two flat tires. We gonna need that tax return money, and that's that's what we got. We may not have got everything we needed, 
but we got the tires. So you just I mean, change the perspective on it. And I'm like, yeah. You, you right. just happy that it didn't happen when we was on the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we covered mm -hmm. so, so, so you just kind of got to look. You always, I've always, I'm starting to go back to my old self. Uh, because I used to be that way where I would find the positive and everything. But then like as I got older, I kind of was like, so like disappointed in a lot of stuff that I'm starting to see negative and negative. But now I'm getting to that point where I'm going back to my positivity, where I'm like, well, what what's the positive outlook on this? Like, what help? Like, what's the good in this situation instead of looking at the bad? Because it's just like um, it's just like you reading negative comments. You have that one negative comment that ruins the whole mm. the whole thing. So you gotta find the good in a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that's important. I, 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 um, I think about that. Like I said, how I used to be when I was in college, like just kind of just speaking life and um, walking in positivity, especially when it came to my finances and different things like that. And I feel like I've lost that. Because sometimes like when you become an adult, it's like it's sure. easy to allow yeah. real life to hit you. And that what happened to me, like come, becoming, getting older, really dealing with real life. It's like you allow that to... Yeah. Transform your thinking, but you have to, just, like you say, you have to get back to how what you know and what you was taught, and getting back to that mindset of different things. Um, mm -hmm. So, but like I said, just I just for me, I just I like to be transparent with people, um, even when I'm like encouraging people. Like we, I still I go through a lot, you know, just not with just VP stuff, but just just in life in general. So I just think it's important that people understand that we all deal with things. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always going through something. But, mm -hmm. yep. you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. And right now, I just realize I'm going through, I'm in the tunnel right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. We're going to come out the other side. Yep. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Well, that's it for the dining room table here uh, with them clays. We appreciate you, appreciate you guys joining <laughs> us. What is that? Damn. Um, let's try it again. Thank you guys for joining us on the dining room table with them players. We appreciate you guys joining us. And we'll be right back, possibly next week. Who knows? Is it Element next week? Or is it the week after that? Okay, so we'll be back next week. And then LMA week? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we might have LMA. <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 listen. If, if, if I tell her, I will have the video. Y'all will see it right here. It'll be so exciting. We'll hold a, we'll hold a sign up. Really? Yes, yes. We're going to be in the front anyway. Yeah, we'll hold a sign up at the concert. Let's make a sign. I'm going to make a sign. I'm definitely going to be making a sign. Yeah, let's do that. Yes. <laughs> well, thank y'all again for joining us, and we'll see y'all next time on the Dino Table. Bye. 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 See y'all later. You know that matters. Tommy, if you still watch it, let us know what we're going to talk about next week. What we need to talk about. Show PG though. We keep it PG. Hey, Tommy. Peace, people. Thank y'all for tuning in again. We appreciate y'all so much. Y'all have a blessed rest of your day.